afternoon, tube ubers. How you doing today? Oh, sorry, hand. Can't do that. <clears throat> so, just dropped off a new toy. Well, not new, brand new. It's kind of used. But, figured it's been a while. And, you know, normally I do stuff on my 2014 Eco Diesel. Just kind of giving people reports on different things to do with them and you know some of my experiences with having the truck because if you're on forums a lot of people have problems with these trucks so far this truck you know i mean 2014 it's got i bought it with 74,000 miles in october it's now the end of july almost august had it for nine months it's got 90,000 miles on it oh, look an easter egg <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, but uh got 90,000 miles on it now. Uh, I've been on four camping trips with it. I've put 15,000 miles on it. Had two oil changes done on it. Uh, well, the last one was oil change and fuel filter. I've had, so far, knock on wood. No issues with it. Um, like I've said in some of my earlier videos, I always use fuel treatments with this thing. I've used, uh, now I'm over to Hot Shot Secrets and Everyday Diesel Treat. Works like a charm. I uh, haven't had any problems with fuel system on the truck. Uh, summertime fuel mileage has been 24 miles to the gallon, which is great. Especially coming from the truck I had before, which was a 2001 quad cab. And two-wheel drive this thing's all four-wheel drive uh, only thing different with this one <clears throat> you got to kind of watch out for is uh, well it's not a bad thing at all this one's got 392 gears so you're gonna get less fuel mileage with it I've got you know like I said 24 is usually what I average with it in the summer 22 over the winter which still can't complain that still beats the old truck by six or seven miles to the gallon so i've been saving oh probably about a hundred gallons of fuel over the course of an oil change uh i've put definite twice that's cost me forty dollars total because i get it from the pump up the street uh it's 275 a gallon which is a lot cheaper than the 13 dollars a gallon for you know your your average Walmart go buy the bottle stuff. Um, sorry, I'm hooking the camper while I do this. So, <clears throat> the other thing is, I just got done with a, a week long trip with my wife and family going to Indiana Dunes and up to Chicago. And I'll tell you what, this is a 27 foot camper, weighs 6,500 pounds dry, and that's dry. I mean, no clothes, no food, which, you know, we stocked the thing with food, had it full of clothes. Um, did great, did in a headwind, sorry, it's a little dark, uh, did it in a headwind going up to Indiana, uh, averaged about 65 miles an hour, did a... Uh, 11.9 miles to the gallon something like that like 11 and between 11 and 10 miles to the gallon which again compared to my brother-in-law who's got an f-150 4x4 fx4 his camper's 31 feet long and just weighs a ton uh he did six <laughs> which okay for a gasser uh, it's pretty good um but on the way back when i didn't have the headwind I was doing 12 miles to the gallon, and just awesome, just absolutely awesome. Um, I don't know what he was doing, I didn't ask. Um, so, the truck tows great. Um, this truck, being that the style it is, it's the outdoorsman package. So it comes with uh, heavier suspension, supposedly. Uh, has an 8,700 pound gross vehicle towing, uh, gross towing weight, so it's a little bit more than most eco diesels, which most eco diesels are like 7,200 pounds. Um, 
Um, it's got 392 gears in the back. That's why I've got a little lower fuel mileage because most of them trucks have 355s. Uh, let's see. But did stellar. Um, another thing when you buy one of these trucks, if you're if you're new to the diesel market, that's basically who I'm going for since more manufacturers are going to three liter half ton uh, diesels, which is not a bad thing. It's actually a pretty good thing. Again, you save a lot on fuel mileage. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, with an average truck, you'll be doing anywhere from 13 to, you know, maybe 15. Sometimes you might eke out a 20 here and there. I'm doing 24 consistently. Um, yeah, they're a little bit more of a headache and a cost as far as oil changes because you're talking 10 and a half, 11 quarts of oil. Uh, the expense of the fuel filters and oil filters, go to rock auto, you can get them there. Um, you can even get the Mopar ones if you, if you want to pay that. Um, I use Wix. They're pretty good. Wix usually is what makes the canister filters for Mopar anyway. So, will not be that much different. Um, now, oil changes at a dealer varies from dealer to dealer. Um, the dealer up the street from me, I've taken it up there once and had the oil change the first time. It was about $215 because I made a mistake says on their website that they'll completely fill your def tank for $17. Mm -hmm. That's a little cheaper than what I get it from the pump. So, hey, cool. I'll, I'll have you guys fill up my def tank, too. No. They charged me $23 a bottle, put two bottles in there, so four gallons, and still didn't even fill my tank all the way up. And it cost me $56. $23 a bottle. So they were charging twice what Walmart charges for one bottle. Um... If, if you go that route or you could do like a lot of people do now they buy these trucks and they go to green diesel engineering or something like that and have the truck tuned have the issues taken care of because some of these trucks have issues for you know uh, EGR coolers will leak but it's easy to figure out when your EGR coolers leaking because you can go through and uh, <clears throat> Like I do, I learned a trick. Thank you uh, to whoever taught me that trick on the forums. But you keep your bottle filled up to your seam right there. And as long as your coolant doesn't go below your seam, you're good. If it starts going below your seam, you need to start to check. And you take off, like the video I showed you earlier, the EGR diffuser tube. And you can see inside there that there might be coolant. Or you can take down your exhaust and see it going in your exhaust. Now this is bad because it will ruin your turbocharger and everything else. There's also a couple, like a three-way valve down on the right side that sometimes leaks. And there's a cooling line that goes to your turbo because it's water and oil cooled that will leak. And it will leak down the back of the engine where you'll never see it. Um, always check your oil. I mean, always. It's it's not just because it's this truck. It's all diesels. You should always check your oil and diesels. Check check your oil about once a week, depending on how many miles you drive. Like me, I drive 400 miles a week. So once a week, you check your oil, make sure your oil is good. As long as your oil is not going down, you're not having any problems. It's just it's just a good thing to do. Open the hood. Look at your cooler bottle. Look at your oil. Check everything out. Make sure everything's in good shape. <clears throat> um, the reason why I use the diesel treatment stuff is because, well, these these are sensitive to these are sensitive to, to uh, lubrication. A lot of the newer diesel, they've lost a lot of lubrication. There's still lubrication in it, but you'll lose lubrication. So it helps protect your injectors, which these aren't hydraulically fired they they're fired electronically but you still have the problem with the you know you need to have plenty of lubrication helps protect your injectors helps keep your injectors clean yada 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 another thing about hot shot secret 
<clears throat> over the everyday diesel treat too that has a longer term lubrication you only use it about they say every six months i use it about every third or fourth uh fuel fill up it's you spend 50 bucks for the both of them most of the time and you end up having lubrication and treatments for months because everyday diesel treat you only use an ounce unless you want to do high performance stuff and then you do two ounces uh, the ed uh, the, the hot shots you put eight ounces in your tank every third or fourth fill up the bottle lasts three or four months at least it does in my case i mean if you do a ton of driving it's not going to last as long of course but still it's it's good good measure uh, so again sorry i'm doing two things at once here um so keep that in mind when you buy a diesel too they're they're finicky but they're nice like I said, I've towed this camper probably, I've, I've, I've towed it twice since, well, not including buying it, um, but I've towed it twice. I've towed it 300 miles round trip up the road here, you know, up further up the state. Um, did, again, 11, 12 miles to the gallon. Never had an issue with it. Um, and then we did close to 700 miles this last go around truck did wonderful like I said 11 12 miles to the gallon on a fully loaded 27 foot camper um, now <clears throat> again to say that's a lot to do with the gearing in the back because it, it wants to stay at about 22 2300 rpm in seventh gear and works great has plenty of torque another thing too um, I don't know if the tunes help it or not because I don't have a tune. This is still all stock. Uh, when you're on the highway with something this big and stay at about 65 miles an hour because these little engines get hot. They have they they don't have a clutch fan. They've got an electric fan, so you got to keep your eye on your temperatures and just if you do about 65, you should be running on an 80 90 degree day. Should be running about. 223 degrees and about 243 degrees with your oil temperature transmission in my truck ran 188 the whole time which is really good that's really cool for one of these transmissions to run you know if you're towing make sure you bring up that screen that shows you all your parameters where your engine's at you know granted it's you know it's electronic but still it kind of gives you a good number as to where you're at as you're driving um a good baseline another thing that you want to know don't have a blowout on your travel trailer I had a blowout on this thing on the driver's side in Chicago traffic on a Saturday afternoon and holy cow don't do it just, just, just don't do it if you can avoid having something go through your tire unlike me because <sighs> You'll get run the hell over. They don't move over for nothing. They do 75 past you. They do not care. <clears throat> I mean, you know, I, I had to be underneath my camper. Luckily, I was smart and brought a four-way with me. But, of course, I don't have a jack strictly for the camper. So I had to use the Rams jack, which, by the way, will lift a 7,000-pound camper when it's put on the axle. It'll lift it just, just fine just kind of feels weird because you have to lay underneath the camper to get leverage to twist the damn bar but just just don't do it i mean you know my wife's like oh, did you check the tire pressures did you do this did you yes honey i did that a nail went through the tire i i can't i can't help a nail they they just happen <clears throat> but it does uh, quite a number on your brand new camper tire when you run over a nail and then have it go flat on you on the highway <sighs> yeah. and another thing too um if you have a truck like mine and you don't have trailer brakes like 
mine did not have trailer brakes and you go to glamping world um, like we did when we bought this and you say yeah I need brake controller weight distribution hitch I need all that they're great we'll get you set up with a brake controller and everything be careful because you're gonna wind up with that down there which works works very well it works just fine it wired right into you know because these trucks especially the outdoorsman model like i've got but i think most all 14 and up rams come pre-wired if you have the trailer kit or the towing kit like this one did they come pre-wired with the seven pin and and trailer brakes underneath the dash ready so they just you know, plug and play they didn't account for my leg they just stuck it underneath the dashboard and well there it is and i constantly hit it with my knee and it's annoying and i need to find somewhere else to put that <clears throat> but i digress that's just an annoyance um so anyway. so yeah it's it's nice to have the eco diesel especially if you're a commuter and you know you're doing a lot of miles that they do get great fuel mileage um they are if you get a good one they're usually pretty good you just have to stay on top of them you just have to work with them they get soot in weird places you may have a problem with soot if you get a tune they always say go to green diesel they've apparently got the best tune on the market you can do all kinds of options with it I don't know if they could fix the one problem that I was having with mine, and that is don't pull this big thing behind it and think you're going to use cruise control because you're, you're not. It's No. Cruise control is pretty much pointless. If you can't maintain your speed, mm -hmm, you're screwed because it wants to downshift a lot. Even on little hills, it'll downshift. Had a couple of times where it downshifted enough where it was like,